Kira Likos with Wise Wolf Tarot, and you're listening to Out of the Broom Closet. So today on the podcast, we have a guest, uh, my good friend, B. She is a professional body piercer, belly dancer, and your basic witch. You can find her on Instagram at bbd00093, on TikTok as Miss B Stings 93 and you can find her at piercingsbyb.com. So, B, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy that you're here. Episode two, my first episode with a guest, and super stoked to have one of my very favorite people, good friend, and dance sister with me. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thanks, love. First First, you the first. first. You my number one, B, you my number one. All right, so we do have an itinerary we're going to try to stick to. Um, I will warn all of you that when me and B get together, um, ridiculous (laughs) Shenanigans. Shenanigans. To say the least. Shenanigans. (laughs) Absolutely. So, the point of this podcast is to bring awareness to paganism and people's paths and the things that they had to deal with um, coming out as pagan. Now, that's not it, but, you know, that's kind of the premise of the podcast. So I do want to ask you, I know that you're pagan, but I don't really know what uh, what path you're following, if you're following a path, like specifically, are you? Um, so my my path is kind of eclectic. Okay. I'm kind of all over the place. I'm a hot mess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's typical. Yeah. That's, that's just me as that's a person. That's just you. Yeah. I'm a basic witch. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of chaotic. I don't have like a particular um, set of deities that I work with. Mm-hmm. I don't have, it's just kind of just kind of go with a flow i can yeah. take a little bit from everywhere mm-hmm. very intuitive witch yeah yeah um do you work with deities no okay. not, not really I'm just curious because i've never heard you talk about them at all yeah, i i acknowledge i haven't really had anybody like come to me and be like hey what's up you I'm know person like we we haven't really i haven't really had anybody call to me mm-hmm. um and if they don't that's fine you know i just kind of appreciate from a distance yeah yeah so, uh, how did you get into paganism? Um, <clears throat> it's a really weird story. Ooh, I love it already. It's, it's weird. Okay. I knew, by the way, by the way, listeners, uh, I texted her the list of questions so she would have a clue before she got here. <laughs> and her response was, you're going to be very surprised by some of my responses. And I've known <laughs> B for years. So this is, I'm excited. I'm just, I am on the edge of my seat. So how'd you get into this? Okay. So it's, it's really dumb. It's oh, really dumb. Okay. I was 11. Uh-huh. Um, Did you see the craft? No. Okay. I didn't see the craft until I was like a full-fledged adult, oh. which is sad because it's so, so good. good. It's like everything I want to be, yeah. you know, except Definitely. not, you know, a murderous raving lunatic. Yeah. Well, um, well, to each their own. Yeah. Sometimes. Maybe. <laughs> um, so I was 11. Uh, I grew up in a like Christian, like kind of baptist kind of you know we didn't really have like a specific it was just it was just christian mm-hmm. um we weren't allowed to have cable um so when no wonder I, you didn't see the craft yeah like, it would have been on cable by the time you would be watching it yeah like you know uh so whenever i would go and visit my set of grandparents that live you know out of town my mm-hmm. my uh paternal grandparents yeah they had cable Ooh. and that was my favorite like oh my gosh so i discovered uh, the Discovery Channel or oh. whatever, whatever you know, like those those kinds of channels. And I had an obsession with ghost hunting shows. Yeah. So I had seen on one of these ghost hunting shows somebody used a pendulum. Oh. And I was like, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. Uh-huh. You know, I fa- it was like okay, the pendulum that I used was literally like one of those clicker things for like a ceiling fan. Uh-huh. But it was a crystal. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> I mean, that's ingenuity right there. Yeah, you know, sometimes you do what you got to do. Um, you know. Yeah. So that was kind of my, like, first little dip into this side was, like, mm-hmm. you know, using that pendulum for the first time and being like, oh, there is something other than what I was raised with. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, like, delved, you know, not really deep into that as mm-hmm. a teenager because I didn't have access to books or I didn't have access to anything. It was more of like becoming more in tune with spirituality yeah. and, you know, the the other side, yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so I 
as a teenager, I called myself a Wiccan. Mm-hmm. Even though I didn't, I didn't really know what it was. I was just like, like everybody else is doing it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, you know, Wiccans like you know, uh, like worship the earth, right? Okay, then I guess I'm a Wiccan. You know, yeah. so that's what I, that's what I called myself. Mm-hmm. And then as I got older, I kind of you know, you get more information. The internet became accessible to me because I wasn't allowed to use the internet. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> so as you know, more information comes to you, you learn more things, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, now here I am. You know. That's so interesting. Like, I never knew that your upbringing was so locked down. Yeah. Um, Wasn't allowed in the front yard without, yeah, without somebody watching me constantly. Um, Wasn't allowed to go to friends' houses. Wasn't, yeah, it was very, very strict. Um, We, so we had cable a little bit when I was like a, a wee babby. (laughs) <laughs> um, but once I got a little bit older and I questioned my grandmother, I was like, why don't we have cable? I want to watch SpongeBob. Like, yeah. why don't we have cable? SpongeBob's important. And she was like, well, there's, you know, there's bad stuff on cable TV and I don't want you watching it. Yeah. And I was like, well, granny, um, there are parental locks, you know, you put in a code or whatever. And she thought that somehow my little eight year old self would somehow become a genius and like unlock the parental codes to watch whatever it was. the underworld, which is what you were trying to do. Yeah, I totally wanted to watch late night HBO as an eight-year-old. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to watch Spongebob. I know. I really just... Did you ever get to watch Spongebob? <laughs> when I went to my other grandparents' house, <laughs> they had cable. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you watch Spongebob as an adult. There is all sorts of, like, innuendos in there. Oh, gosh. And poor Squidward. Squidward is all adults. All adults are Squidward and like SpongeBob is the new like 19, 20 to 21 year old who's new to the workforce and everyone who's been in the workforce for a while is totally Squidward and we're just like, why am I here? Why are you so chipper at yeah. nine o'clock in the morning? Why? Like, don't you know it's Monday? Like, stop. Oh, gosh. It's gross. And I, so I, <laughs> I was watching. I wasn't necessarily. No, I was watching it. I'm not going to front. I was watching it. So I was babysitting a small child, mm-hmm. and he was watching SpongeBob. So naturally, I'm watching with him. Mm-hmm. And there's this episode about some boots, some squeaky boots. Mm-hmm. And as I'm watching, I'm like, this is totally a telltale heart from Edgar Allan Poe. Was it? Yes. Oh, my God. This that's is to- fantastic. But with squeaky rubber boots. Shut up. Yeah. Like, it was, it was genius. That's impressive. I'd never, I don't know if I've ever seen that episode, because I definitely would have remembered that. Yeah. It was like, because, uh, you know, Mr. Krabs got tired of the squeaky boots, so he buried the boots under the floorboard, and all he could hear was the squeaking of the boots, and, like, at one point, he, like, okay, you know, it, they're here under the floor. Yeah, it was, oh like, totally, gosh. I was like, that is an Edgar Allan Poe reference. It's fantastic. It was brilliant. So, your first tool, your first divination tool is a pendulum. Do you still use a pendulum? Not really. No. Um, I have a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them I got from a subscription box and mm-hmm. immediately dropped it. Ooh. And the tip broke off. <laughs> you were not supposed to have that guy. I was not. Uh, he was not supposed to. <laughs> no, he got put in the wrong box. Yeah, he didn't like me. <laughs> That's um, sad. Yeah, I, you know, I no, I don't really use pendulums a whole lot. Although I did see a pretty cool trick for pendulums. Like if you have shaky hands and stuff, mm-hmm. um pretty cool trick for stabilizing them with like a a, like a big jar Mm -hmm. you like put the pendulum into like the cork of the jar Mm -hmm. and like let the jar do all the work oh interesting like i could maybe try that i've seen people like put it put them in a jar like and uh, like wrap it around a pencil and put the pencil on top of the jar so that their hands don't touch it yeah but it can hang so there's all sorts of stuff probably found that on pinterest probably (laughs) it's pretty (laughs) pinterest has all the things I can't, you know what? For some reason, I can't navigate Pinterest. Really? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I clicked on something and it just like pops up like a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, "Ah, this is overwhelming. I can't handle it. Yeah. um, Sometimes. Or, or you go to do a recipe. Oh, God. Oh, you know where I'm going, don't you? Oh, I know exactly where you're going. Listen, Martha, I don't care about your trip to wherever. (laughs) I just want... The recipe, I don't care how many times a week you and your family eat it. I don't care that your husband is glucose intolerant and this works for him too. Like, I just (laughs) want the deets. Just give me the deets to the recipe. I just want to make this pasta. Like, (laughs) 
I feel Give it that. To me. I don't care about your trip to Rome. Yeah, <laughs> no. Quit rubbing it in that you get to blog and go on vacations while I work myself to death. Thanks. I'm just trying to make dinner for like five people. Yeah. Like, just give me the recipe. The Show other... me how to make the noodles. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing about recipes on Pinterest is they always say, it's like, oh, 30 minutes. Why am I still cooking two hours later? <laughs> Why? Why does it take me two hours to make a 30 minute meal? I don't understand it. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Especially if it's the first time you're making it. Then it's like yeah. two and a half. All right, so you don't really use pendulums anymore. Do you do any sort of uh, divination at all? Um, so I, I've i been into tarot. Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of been out of practice mm-hmm. for a couple of years just because life has been insane. Yeah. Um, that and it, it hurts to use my brain oh, yeah. <laughs> as of late. Um, last couple of years, I've been dealing with chronic pain. Okay. So my my third eye is like, no, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. So I like for some reason the past couple of years I think it has something to do with the pain. Um, I just I pick up on next to nothing gotcha. anymore. Like every once it in a while, could be. yeah, every once in a while I'll get like little blips, mm-hmm. but and it, it it makes it hard for me to read my cards because I'm like I'm I'm getting nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean, although uh, my my deck did say something pretty awful to me. The other day. Really? <laughs> so dare I ask? I okay. So I asked a yes or no question. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't a yes or no. It was a this or that. Mm-hmm. Um, very. It was a very, very binary question. And um, it gave me a very, like, you haven't picked me up in, like, six months and you're asking things of me? How <laughs> dare you? The first card I pulled was the tower. Oh, like, girl. Uh, like, uh, okay, geez. Like, I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, like... It's like, oh, 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 N- when your world is falling apart, you now, now you come to me. Yeah. Like, you're, you're the, the begrudge, your cards are the begrudged best friend. Yeah. The like got kicked, to, you got kicked to the curb <laughs> because you ran off to Boyfriend Island and now you're coming back and it's just like, oh, oh, now you want me. Yeah. So That's yeah, so my cards are mad at me. Then, oh my gosh. So as I was doing this reading, mm-hmm. <laughs> so my boyfriend is sitting right next to me. And he, like, pauses his show because he's like, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to disrupt. You know what I mean? I hate how perfect your new boyfriend is. Oh, my God. I I don't even want to talk about him. He doesn't (laughs) exist to me. He's dead. He's dead to me. (laughs) That man's dead to me. Anyways, proceed with your story. Yeah, so, you know, he pauses. I'm like, you can can still watch the show. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? It's fine. And he's like, but I, you know, I figured you might... Need some, con- you know, some concentration, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I just don't, I don't want to disrupt what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, bless you. So I just, I don't know. I I mean, I told him, you know, you can watch your show or whatever. But it was just, I don't know. It was it was so cute that he was like, hold up. You're, you're doing, you're doing your thing. I can't, mm-hmm. you know, I can't interrupt your thing. Mm-hmm. He was like interested in what I was doing. Like he was looking over and he's like, well, what does that mean? What is like, what is, okay, well, what does that say? What is, you know, it was just mm-hmm. so cute. It was I'm great. Living for it. Now, he was raised in a very religious household as well. Oh, yes. So, apparently, when he was younger, they weren't super duper religious until, like, like his later, like, teen years, I mm-hmm. think, even. Um, but, yeah, no, he, he comes from a very st- strict Christian background. Interesting. Yeah. How does that work? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> now, does it work between you and him? Yeah. Okay. surprisingly um he's he himself is very like open and like open-minded and like doesn't he doesn't have that like I'm, judgy yeah like when he asks questions it's from a very like i'm curious to know what you're really about and not like a not from like a um like a you know a place of judgment yeah um <clears throat> i've also i mean i've had people ask questions as like a like kind of treat me like a like a party trick you know i, I, I imagine you've had it before where people are like oh can you read my cards like i don't really believe oh, in this stuff God, but can you read my time. cards all the time and they you know they treat you like you're you know a party clown and it's like no like yeah. you know but he he's never been anything it's genuine like, curiosity yeah yeah i love that yeah it's great but um so his his family uh i'm not sure which family member exactly but they Came across my Instagram wah, wah, wah. the day after I met his parents. 
Interesting. And he got a phone call from his mother. Goodness. Yeah. And um, that's one way to, like, you know, <laughs> make an impression. Yeah. Apparently, they were already kind of, she kind of turned off, I had, you know, crazy hair. up they for those of you who have never seen me before, uh, you know, crazy hair colors and tattoos and piercings all over the place. And, you know, um, apparently they already didn't like that. Mm. Uh, so they decided to check out my Instagram, which has in my bio, it's literally belly dance, body modification and witchcraft. There you go. And that sums up B, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're done here. Yeah. That's just me. So, you know, uh, it was great being here. Uh, catch you, you know, catch you guys later. See you cats on the flip flop. Uh, <laughs> on the flip flop. Uh, Bringing but, the chocolates into it. <laughs> but uh, so he got a, he got a phone call from his mom and his mom was just like, well, you know, we're just we're just concerned, mm-hmm. you know, because we don't want anything to happen to you. We don't, you know, we don't want you to get hurt. Mm-hmm. And you know, isn't this like against your religion? Like, you know, because you're a Christian, aren't you? Like, you know, this is against your religion. And he was like, "Oh hell no!" That's so funny. He was like, "Okay, my religion says not to judge people, and that's what you're doing. And just because she does something different from what we do, does not make her a bad person." Yes. So I I thought it was it just it it touched my little black heart to uh <laughs> you know for him to come to my defense in such a way but they still don't like me. <laughs> but does does that cause tension between him and his family? I'm not sure. Um I know that there's tension between me and his family cuz I can mm-hmm. feel it. You can cut you can cut it yeah, with a knife. It's palpable. Like it's it's you can touch it, you know. That's how that's how <laughs> how thick the uh the tension is. Um, but between him and his family, I'm not sure. Gotcha. If so, he doesn't talk about it. Yeah. If so, he doesn't, he doesn't say anything. Well, that's good. Yeah. I just hope it doesn't become an issue. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's already kind of an issue, but even more of an issue down the line, you know, if we decide to, uh, you know, pop out some, some tiny humans and do all, do all that business, you know. (laughs) Down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think at that point they don't they won't really have a choice. I mean, they don't have I don't think they really have a choice now. He seems very he seems to care about you very, very much and doesn't seem to care that his parents don't care about you very much. Yeah. I think that their opinion of you is irrelevant to him, which is honorable and admirable. Yeah. Well, and his his little sister, bless her, she's she's spectacular. So I guess they were at dinner together, you know, his, him and his siblings and his parents and, Mm -hmm. you know, his parents were saying something about one of the other siblings' partners. Yeah. His little sister was like, well, you know what? You don't like any of our partners, so we don't, you know, we don't really care if you don't like them because you just don't like anybody. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a thing. So I just, I I thought that was, that was precious. (laughs) So sweet. How old is she? She is 16. Oh, that is sweet. It's about the age where you start, like, standing up for yourself, really. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm glad that it hasn't caused any real issues with your guys' relationship. Yeah. None at all. Yeah. So how how long have you been into paganism? You said you were, like, 11? Yeah, about 11. Okay. Something like that. That was before I really knew what I was doing. Yeah. Because, I mean, my, my paternal grandparents followed um some some native traditions native american traditions oh, interesting you know smudging and you know like a lot of that kind of stuff um so i tried to more fit their mm-hmm. model of the way that they did things um and then as i got older i kind of found my own you know my own path so are you do you have native american in you um so <laughs> oh here we go here we go we're gonna have the smudging conversation people oh goodness okay so my grandfather mm-hmm. on my my dad's side um, we were, all of us were raised with the idea that we had a significant Iroquois bloodline. Like we had some serious Iroquois and yeah. Apache um, blood in us. And my grandfather <laughs> about a year ago took one of those ancestry tests, oh, the ancestry no. DNA. There is zero Native American in my grandfather's blood. Oh my goodness. It's all Scottish. <laughs> Shut the front door. None. Oh my god. Yeah, which I mean it was it was still kind of it was cool growing yeah, up that yeah. way, but 
you know, the fact that we were raised. Your whole like, childhood was a lie. Yeah, we are not native at all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, here's the funny thing that I found about about um, Bakersfield is most people we are told, especially girls, I feel like this is a real girl thing, that like our heritage, that there's like a Cherokee princess. Oh yeah. Like our great, great, great grandmother was a Cherokee princess. Yeah. Because I was told that. And I've told other people, and they're like, well, my great, 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 whatever was a Cherokee princess. And I'm like, then I get older, I'm like, oh, I don't really think they yeah, I was Yeah, I was told Iroquois princess was like, yeah. My, yeah. I think they just told us that so that we would feel special. Yeah, like we would have some kind of royal blood. And it's like, there weren't even princesses. <laughs> those weren't, those. that wasn't a thing. Yeah, there's, there's no princesses. No. <laughs> amazing, amazing culture. I don't know enough about it. Um, I w- would love to do more research and gain more knowledge but i have a deep deep respect for it we used to go to the powwows all the time um when they had them up at bc oh, right have on. you ever been um not at bc when i was a tiny tiny human i do remember going to powwows i think up in kernville i'm mm. not sure i was so small i don't even really but i remember going i remember watching people play the drums yeah. i remember watching dancing with mm-hmm. like the whole uh, the regalia and yeah. oh my gosh, it was fantastic. and the energy that those people raise when they're when they're like doing the drum circles and they've got the dancing going on and they are in their zone, man, it is palpable. Oh yeah, palpable. I and I think that's why I always loved it. Like whenever I heard the power, I was going, I was like, are we going? Are we going? Because like you could feel it. So you've been into paganism roughly since you were like eleven. Yeah. What do you wish you had known before you got started? Um. Honestly, you know, I I struggle with this one because I I feel like the the entire path is learning. Oh yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're never like okay, I I'm doing this and I know everything about it. Your entire path includes learning. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, I'm not sure. I wish um as a as a young person, well, I guess I like to think I'm still a young. You're person. still young. You're still young. Um, I, I mean, I'm on I'm mid twenties, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm, maybe young. that's young. I don't know. I'm having a quarter life crisis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quarter life crisis. <laughs> but uh, I wish I had access to more information when I was younger, um, as a teenager, because mm-hmm. I feel like maybe if I had somewhere to put all of my my feeling and my emotion, I was a very angsty child like yeah. i was very you know um uh, with what we call emo uh mm. you know but i i i had that desire mm-hmm. to practice but i didn't have the tools or the information and i feel like if i had had that you know if i had had somewhere to put my energy instead of sitting around being sad all the time <laughs> uh you know i i would have been able to do something productive and I mean, I think that you did. I think that you really trusted your intuition when you took the frickin' crystal off of your, you know, <laughs> your fan to use as a pendulum. Like, that was, you know, a yeah. very intuitive maneuver. Um, because, I mean, I wouldn't have thought to do that at all. Like, you know my story about, like, how I got my cards. And, and one day we'll go through that on here. But, I mean, those were shoved down my throat yeah. Like I, if they hadn't come to me, I don't know if I would have ever, I probably would have because my mom was into Wicca and had kind of, you know, started giving me books to read and stuff yeah. so that I could know what she was doing. But I don't know if I would have quite, you know, hit the cards as hard as I did. Yeah. Um. And like, so one memory that I, I do have as a teen, because mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of access, but when I was, I want to say like 14, my mother uh introduced me to new insight bookstore Mm -hmm. downtown yeah uh when it was i don't know if you remember when it was in the other building the greenhouse the the one the greenhouse or the white one oh the one that was right down the street on the it's always been on h yeah but in, at one point, it was in like a two-story greenhouse on the corner that was much closer to California. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, um, I can't remember which which cross street it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she had taken me in there, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my word!" Oh yeah. If I could afford this stuff, <laughs> right? My mom took me there when we, when I was younger too. Yeah. And um, I remember like seeing stuff in towards like the back room. I was mm-hmm. like, "Mom, I just saw like a shadow." But there's like 
no people over there? And the lady behind the counter, was, she's like, oh, you've got sight, huh? And I was like, I don't know what that means, lady, <laughs> but I saw a shadow back there. You take it as you will. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. So she she would take me every once in a while. She had a friend who lived in like the those houses right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so she would visit with her friend, and then I'd be like, "Mom, can I run over to the, to the store and go look and see what stuff they have?" Mm-hmm. And so you know, I would go and just I didn't have any money, so I would just look, you know. But I remember she did buy um, a vampire tarot at mm-hmm. one point, and I remember like opening it up and like trying to read it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is so confusing." Yeah. I can't like it was it was too much for me at the time because I was like even even now like I struggle with reading the little the little book that comes yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me it's just it's so much and I I prefer to do things intuitively which may or may not be the best way to do it. But Well, there's there's a lot of um a lot of back and forth on whether tarot should be intuitive or whether tarot should be literally by the book. Yeah. Because every card has a meaning, has a very specific meaning. And it's a very finite system, but I feel like it, it, it works as like a gateway, like that unlocks the door for you to walk through to get to your intuition regarding the situation. Yeah. So for me, when I hear people be like, oh, you should, you shouldn't use tarot as an intuitive tool. If you're going to be intuitive, use Oracle cards, which is a very common thing that people tell people. And I personally, this is my personal opinion I think that that's wrong. Like, I don't think, not that you shouldn't use Oracle cards if you just want to be intuitive, but I feel like you can also use tarot and be intuitive. I feel like you have, if you have some base knowledge, if you have the base knowledge, then you can, like I said, it's like a key to the door to your intuition. Yeah. Then you can keep walking down that path. But it's, it's definitely not something that you have to know every meaning of every card. But if you've got the basics down, because I did the same thing when I, I, the, because the cards that I got were vintage hand me down from a crazy stranger. They didn't come with a little white book. <laughs> yeah. Like my mom was like, oh, well, we'll get you a tarot book and, and it's around here. It's in one of these boxes somewhere. Um, it's a, it's a blue tarot book with a sun on the front of it. I can still see it clear as day. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to be super organized. And I got a notebook and I was writing down what all of the, um, all of the suits meant and what all of, like I was in each of the suits, like I used a different color pen. Oh, wow. Cause I mean, I was in like junior high. So, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to, this is going to be so organized. This is going to be great. And f- man, there was just no getting through that thing. Yeah. No getting through it. I don't think to this day I've ever read a book tip to tail on tarot. I, I can't read a book tip to tail on anything. I'm a very, <laughs> I'm a very like encyclopedia like i pick things out you know mm-hmm. like okay i i need something for uh i don't know happiness or something you yeah. know scroll through my little book oh okay here's all these herbs and here's these crystals and here's mm-hmm. all the you know um the correspondences and you yeah. know like i i can't i can't read back to front yeah I can't, I can't do it well and i think the problem with that when it comes to especially like pagan books regarding knowledge yeah is there so much everything on this planet has a correlation to something else yeah i mean i see you eyeballing my books that's part of my books yeah like that's I, part it's of just, them it's such a pretty stack there's two <laughs> there's two things there's two boxes over here and then i got like that whole drawers books there's a lot yeah. of books i grew up in a bookstore I still live in a bookstore. Yeah, yeah, that's no, how I feel. Yeah, yeah, that's you have a I whole feel. library here. I do, I do. All, all the pretty crystals. And yeah. Oh. My desk, by the way, is covered, covered in crystals. Anyone who does not follow my social media and has not seen my desk, I had to move things in order to set up the microphones <laughs> today. And <laughs> like I'm knocking, knocking things over, making a mess. It's just like that's what it is. This is this is the life life of a witch, right? Yeah, here. it's just chaos, chaos and crystals. Chaos and crystals. Shirt. It's gonna be a shirt. Oh, chaos gonna, and crystals. I, I will get. I will get on the design. All right. All right. Do you it. do that. All right. So, in your years of being a witch, what fears or obstacles have you come across being pagan? Like issues with family. I know we talked about the boyfriend, but like, yeah. like people in your life or just random strangers. Um. A lot of it is because I, I don't really interact with a whole lot of people outside of like my circle. Mm-hmm. You know, most people I interact with know already. Yeah. 
and choose to associate with me either anyway or because of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a little bit kinda, of both. Yeah, like we kind of we kind of just float around in the same circles. Yeah. Um as far as family, um I have read tarot for family members back when I was better. <laughs> um and then some family members just think that I watch too much Harry Potter. There you go. Yeah. So for the most part, I haven't really encountered problems within my family. Um but I'm I'm also very like I don't care what you have to say. I don't and they they don't really question it. Um in in my older years, I've become a lot more ornery and more hard-headed and <laughs> you're not you're not going to tell me how to live my life. Yeah. It's just not something that we're just not going to do that. That's yeah, it's one of the things I've always really admired about you is you're always authentically you. Like I I have seen you deal with people giving you shit <laughs> and you're just like deal with it. I don't care. <laughs> Your opinion of me is none of my business. I don't care what you think. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things I've always really admired about you is is you don't let other people get to you. And if you do, you hide it really well. I I, I really I mean, what does their opinion really what does it really do to me? Yeah. Um okay, so I've I've had workplace discrimination where my old boss was heavily involved with a church. More for a political move than an actual religious one. Gotcha. I, I saw this how this person moved about his his life. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I had taken my tarot cards to work. And he knew that I was a witch before he hired me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I took my tarot cards to work. And I was just kind of practicing with him, whatever. And he walks in and he's like, put, put that away. You know, don't be having that. And I with him, you can't really tell when he's joking and when he's serious. Gotcha. Like he's, I don't know, he's got a pretty good poker face. Mm -hmm. Um. So I kind of took it as, oh, he's joking. He's just giving me shit because he gave me shit about it all the time. Yeah. Um. So like a couple months later or something like that, I had them out again and he came in and he really got on to me and he was like, you know, um, don't don't be having that devil stuff in here. And, you know, this is this is my place of business. And, you know, you you can do whatever you want in your free time. But, you know, don't be bringing that stuff into my shop. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, now I can't even, you know. And then it became like a, oh, you shouldn't wear that shirt because certain people come in here and they don't like it. I, okay. So I wear a lot of like satanic imagery. I, you know, I like Satan, but only as a friend. So there's not like a, you know, I'm not a Satan worshiper or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I wear a lot of like, you know pentagram i think i think a lot for you it's more the aesthetic yeah because i i because i mean you don't work with deities so yeah. it's not like you got a relationship with them yeah it's just you know only as a friend you yeah. know so a lot of it's my aesthetic and kind of getting under people's skin and this mm -hmm. and that and he's like oh you shouldn't wear that shirt because you know christians will come in here and they'll they'll flip out and i was like okay so now i'm being told what i can and can't wear and technically i'm supposed to be an independent contractor like i should be able to do whatever the hell i want and if you were I mean, being pagan, that's a religious symbol to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it did have the goat on there. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, and technically, technically the goat is actually Baphomet. Yeah. So it's part of your religion and that's a protected class. Yeah. So. But, you, could you know, tell. yeah, because there was no like, like he really, I could have been fired at any moment for anything. So oh, I was yeah. like really trying to like, it was a complicated work situation. <laughs> like there was a lot of things that I did to try to protect my job because I was convinced that I, they, nobody would ever hire me anywhere else. Um, so. Which was totally not true. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Cause now I'm, you know, I'm working at a great spot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there was that. And then come to find out, um, people from his church were coming up to him and were like, how can you let that witch work in your shop i can't come in there now because you have a devil worshiper as a piercer and like it became an issue and i'm like wow like people really won't get piercings from me because because i i suppose deviate from the norm mm -hmm. so i mean that that's the only real issue and the only real fear i ha so far i haven't encountered a face-to-face -face, like oh I don't feel comfortable working with you because of, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. what what you got on or something. Yeah, but yours actually got back to you. Like like with me, a lot of my situation was just my own fears. I didn't no one ever said anything bad to my knowledge. Yeah. Um I'm a lot uh, a lot more closeted looking than you. Like, like yeah, I'm very <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, you know, I, I don't have my hair dyed. I don't got piercings and tattoos. I don't wear, you know, a bunch of um, very outwardly pagan attire. Yeah. But um, 
I mean, for you, you actually heard that these things were being said and this was a problem with your job. Yeah. You know? So that's that's definitely a thing is workplace discrimination, which I mean, I it's so strange to me that people of certain belief systems can say whatever they want to us and mm -hmm. control how we do things. But if we try to put the reverse and mm -hmm. say, well, I'm not comfortable because you believe that then we're the bad guys like, oh yeah if so... i walked up to somebody and said i'm sorry but your cross is really offending me yeah a, a man died on that don't you know yeah that is like a, that oh is goodness. a symbol of of death. hatred and, and death yeah mass genocide <laughs> yeah one of the things i i thought was interesting when i was in high school was we had a bible club which yeah. which i was like okay whatever uh so can can we start a pagan club no oh, no 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 that would not be possible. Yeah. we. So when I was in high school a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> like, she just graduated, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, y'all. Uh, no. So I, I graduated in 2012. Mm -hmm. So when I was in high school, we also had a Bible club. We also had a Christian athletes. Like what? Uh, how did? What? Yeah. <laughs> like what the heck? What school did you go to? I went to Stockdale. Goodness. Yeah. We had Christian athletes. How... In the heck does Christian and athlete, like, well, how do those go together? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why should they be segregated? That's the question. Yeah. Like, why Why not? If you're a Christian athlete, just join the freaking Bible just club. Be, you know. Just be an athlete that goes to Bible club. You don't need to have your own, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was a flex that they had enough Christians that could make a team. Yeah. Who knows? It was insane. But Absurd. for... About, I want to say six months, we had a group that was the free thinking atheists and ag agnostics group. Oh, nice. And, you know, personally, I didn't join because I had my own, you know, but I thought it was rad that they had that group. And much of the Bible group um, was part of the student body, like the mm. student council or whatever. Mm hmm. And had the free thinking atheists and agnostics club shut down. Shut the front door. Yeah. That is absurd. Yeah. Insane. Wow. Insane. Is that even legal? Like, oh man. Yeah. They I mean, I think they found some other weird, obscure kind of reason to shut it down. Mm -hmm. But it's because most of the people on this the student council were in Bible Club. Wow. And like, I think, um, what was it? I think they tried to shut down our LGBTQ alliance club down, too. And I think they, they tried to make some kind of excuse like, oh, you know, you guys aren't doing enough charity work or something, which it didn't make any sense to me. Like, why do you need to do a whole bunch of extra stuff to have a, a club of people to hang out on camp? Like, I don't know. It just yeah. Didn't. But yeah, basically, they, they tried to come up with some excuse, kind of like um our California law of uh the at will firing you know just yeah. come up come up with some random excuse mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well and that's one of the fears that like i had which i i discussed previously was i was if i get fired from my job for sucking at my job that's my fault i sucked at my job yeah if i get fired because of my religion i'm gonna be freaking agitated like because that's not something that should be taken into consideration when it comes to my employment yeah period so like i thankfully where i work is is very open-minded and it's 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 a great place um it's a great place for me yeah because because they're they're very cool about it and i've i've done tarot for multiple people in the office but those were fears that i had was getting fired for quote no good reason but it's like oh well um they looked at someone wrong like it's and I'm sure, like, an HR person is going to listen to this and be like, you guys are stupid. Comment. Reach out to me. Let me know what the rules actually are, because I have not a clue. But I know it's a lot easier to fire someone in California than somewhere else. Yeah. And my my thing as an independent contractor is that my contract can just be terminated. So it's not... Yeah. I'm not employed, so I can't be fired. Mm -hmm. But my... Since I, I pay so rent... you have even less rights. Yeah, like I, I can just basically be evicted from my booth that I rent from. Hmm. So that's even, you know, that's even more complicated. But luckily, the owner of my shop is very like, you do you, boo-boo. Like my my station is decorated in a very, you've seen my station. I've seen your station. Yeah, like I have like 
the moon, like a huge tapestry mm-hmm. with the moon and, you know, my skulls and mm-hmm. some various crystals. Well, and... you've got one of your pagan sisters right next to you in the booth next door. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. It's nice. Shout out to Miss Solstice, amazing tattoo artist, by the way. Mm-hmm. And what's the what's the shop that you're at right now? Uh, Touch of Ink. Touch of Ink. That's over on Rosedale? Yeah. yeah. Right next to the uh, Valvoline. <laughs> In case you don't see it. Yeah, because you're not going to see it because we're very tucked away. <laughs> very tucked away. It's kind of one of those places you got to know it's there. Yeah. But uh, it's very clean. I've been in there before. Like I said, B is a great piercer. Body modification specialist. What do you call yourself? Body piercer. Um, Right now, I am about to start a doula course. So... That's <laughs> that's about I'm, I'm blinking profusely. Uh that's that's about as medical as I can really get right now. Really? Yeah. A doula course. Yeah. Um because I'm intrigued. Because ultimately I wanted to be a midwife. I wanted mm-hmm. to be like a um like a not necessarily holistic, but like, you know, do the home births. Yeah. You know, like a, a multi faith, you know, do like traditional nomadic births with like ritualistic type you know i wanted to do that thing because it's just yeah. it seems rad and people well, want to do it I don't, I don't think i've ever heard of anybody actually doing that where you like in interject pagan faith into birthing yeah because birthing is a very spiritual experience mm-hmm. yeah. um so you know and it was, makes sense yeah and it was treated very spiritually you know throughout many different cultures so i you know it'd be cool to be able to integrate that um, but unfortunately, I'm not that smart. Oh, shut <laughs> up. We're definitely cutting that out of this. <laughs> well, so in California, most states, um, they want you to be a nurse first. Gotcha. And, you know, I, I've i been going to school, but the nursing program, especially here in town, is ridiculous to try to get into. It's basically like a lottery. Oh. Um, you have to do all of these prerequisites that have nothing to do with the course. I don't know why I have to take U.S. history in order to be a nurse. I don't know when I'm ever going to use the Constitution when I'm resuscitating somebody. Um, but you have to take all of these prerequisites and then there's the nursing program that, you know, that's a whole lot of, like, schooling to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I, it's a little too much for me. Yeah. It's a little too much. And that's a lot of debt. Yes. Yeah. That is true. So a lot I. Of debt. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the doula thing because that seems a little bit more my speed. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like something that I apparently my clients think I would do well in. You know, my clients have told me that I should be a nurse. I don't I don't particularly want to be a nurse, mm-hmm. but they've told me that I should I should be doing something medical. So I'm like, okay, doula, 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 gonna be a doula. All right. So one of the questions that I have is, what is your favorite thing about being pagan? freedom okay just free like there's no there's no set rules Mm -hmm. for how you do things i mean there are guidelines there are things like you know maybe maybe don't um you know don't give your body parts to Faye or (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) i had a whole conversation with bethany shout out to bethany uh about Faye the other day and how you got to be careful which one of those you guys you you talk to because There's that's some deepness. Yeah, I, I definitely want to have her on for an episode. To talk about Faye. Oh gosh, there's a whole there was a whole debacle on TikTok about accepting gifts from Faye. Okay, so this might be the thing she was talking about. Yeah. Um. So it was like a water horse, something like that. I'm I'm not sure. Somebody. Okay, this lady person, I don't know, girl, lady person, posted on TikTok that she received a gift of moss from the Faye. And said thank you, which apparently you don't say thank you to Faye, which okay. I, I read into why and it makes sense. And I, it's kind of something that I kind of want to like integrate. Enlighten us. Um, so apparently when you say thank you, people treat it as like an end all of like, oh, I'm saying thank you. So therefore I'm repaying you for, you know, the gift that you just gave me and the interaction ends. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more appropriate to say, I really appreciate this or you know, some other way to establish that this gift has meaning to you. Otherwise, like a thank you is just kind of like a, eh, just yeah. kind of like you just blurt it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But if you, if you say something a little with a little bit more meaning to it, yeah. you know what I mean? Because they, yeah, it, apparently thank you is just very offensive. And I kind of, I understand, mm-hmm. you know, after reading that. Um, So this, this gal 
posted that she accepted a gift from the Fae and she said thank you and this and this and that. And then I'm going through this gal's TikTok and she's posting the most, like, you could tell she just watches way too much Percy Jackson <laughs> and, like, just, she watches way too many movies and mm-hmm. that's where she gets her, her, her knowledge. Yeah. And mm. she's spreading this as fact. And it's like, it's one thing to have your own kind of beliefs and like, okay, I feel that this deity kind of works this way with me personally, Mm -hmm. but she's spreading it as fact. And Mm -hmm. it's like, some of this information is harmful. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? There's a whole thing going around witch talk. That's what we call it, witch talk, that Mm -hmm. side of TikTok. And so I I had posted a response to it personally from my perspective as a somewhat secular type person who doesn't work with anybody i'm mm-hmm. just like don't even risk it <laughs> just, just don't don't do it yeah well and i think that's that's one of the problems with this day and age is there's almost too much information everywhere you know and everyone's got their own opinion on everything and then you have people who don't really know what they're doing putting themselves out on social media as authorities on a on a subject that they know nothing about yeah you know it's it's really it can be terrifying like i look at people who you know you can tell okay they look cool they've got the big brimmed hat on they're wearing their little black dress and and no offense to those people i love those people but for someone to go out and be like i know everything there is to know about blank if it's pagan and you end it You end that sentence with anything revolving paganism or divination. You're dumb. If you come across anyone that says, oh, I am the tarot expert. There's no such thing. There is no such thing. I think, mm, okay, so let me backtrack that a smidge. I do think that in tarot, because it is a finite system. Yeah. In tarot, you can probably be a tarot expert if you do not incorporate any sort of intuitiveness into your tarot readings. So I think with tarot, because it is a very finite system, um, it's a little bit different than probably everything else, like herbs or crystals, okay? Because, you know, each of the cards has a very specific meaning. And if you're reading by the book with no intuitiveness, intuition, whatever you want to call it, um, that it's, uh, it's very possible to be a tarot expert. But if you take into consideration intuition, then there's no such thing as an expert. Like, other than me telling you, Hey, trust your gut. Like, yeah, yeah that's what you do. Ha <laughs> ha, cool. Um, but if it's crystals, you can you can be a knowledgeable crystal hoarder like I am, which is literally like at work, they call me the crazy crystal lady. Like I'm <laughs> waiting for a cup. You know, I know a lot about crystals, but I guarantee you there are thousands of crystals that I know nothing about. So I will never tell you, oh, I know all there is to know ask me a question because you know what the person who's going to ask me a question is going to ask me a question about the basics okay and that's what i find on social media when people are acting like they're experts is normally the type of person who's going to someone on social media for answers is a beginner yeah so and that's where the harm comes in if you tell people oh yeah nah you can totally curse people not a problem your boyfriend pissed you off oh okay yeah, give me a lock of his hair. We'll handle this. Okay. That's not okay. Yeah, no. You know, and I feel like there's so much on the internet these days that it's really easy to get confused. When I started this, it was books. That was it. Yeah. The internet, y'all, I'm old. The internet was not that big of a thing. You had AOL and bulletin board systems. Google did not exist. I'm letting that sink in. Google did not <laughs> exist i could and tell you what i would go to a website that i knew was a website so i'd go type it in i'd go to the kitchen i'd make my sandwich (laughs) grab grab something to drink and i'd get back and my page would still be loading people okay like you had to wait around for your knowledge it was not this instantaneous gratification that people have now dial up it's it's, oh god (laughs) i still remember the sound we are is horrible oh mercy horrible Oh gosh, I, was I remember terrible. when MySpace was MySpace. was the thing. MySpace oh. was a jam when I was in like I was in like seventh grade or something, mm-hmm. seventh eighth grade, whatever. I remember I was at my grandparents' house 
you know, my, my paternal grandparents, and they, they had interwebs, Ooh. but it was the dial-up, so it was pretty slow, and they the phone wouldn't ring mm-hmm. when the dial-up was being used. Like, you, you couldn't use the phone and the internet yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. time. So I remember being on MySpace, which uh, I wasn't allowed to be on MySpace at home, but my grand- my paternal grandparents would let me be mm-hmm. on MySpace. So I remember, like, going through MySpace, and I clicked on somebody's profile, and back then you could pick your own backgrounds and stuff. Oh, yeah. And this boy, he was like my age, but his background was a naked lady. Oh, goodness. And I was like trying to exit because like, I'm not trying to look at naked ladies. Mm -hmm. The computer got stuck. Oh, no. My grandmother came in because um, the spare bedroom was also an office. She kept her, you know, her stuff, her paperwork and stuff Mm -hmm. in there. She came in to get something and I was like, oh, God, I I can't. I can't. I had to like cover, like I was trying to like, okay, what do you need? I'll grab it for you. She came in and she saw, she used my my first and middle name. Oh goodness! And I was like, I wasn't looking at that. I promise. I was trying to get back to my page. Like I, <laughs> so sorry, busted. Yeah, it busted. was it was so bad. But I mean, luckily I didn't get in trouble. She's just like, delete that person. <laughs> yeah, they're like, mm, you're not allowed, not allowed anymore. So. The last question I have on the docket is, is there anything right now that you're interested in or interested in learning more about when it comes to paganism? Um, honestly, I mean, as much as I would love to just know everything, mm-hmm. um, I, I would like to have a more in-depth knowledge of, um, like herbs mm-hmm. and like edible things gotcha. and more kitchen witchy type stuff. Ooh, okay. Um, because I I'm trying to learn more cooking type things. I've been having problems with like integrating my my practice into my everyday mm-hmm. because I don't spend much time at home anymore. Yeah. I'm always at my boyfriend's house. And you know, so one one thing that I do almost every day is make tea. Mm-hmm. I make a big freaking pitcher of sweet tea, mm-hmm. and so I try to incorporate a little little bit of magic into my, mm-hmm. you know, adding the sugar and doing the stirring. I stir up clockwise every time, and mm-hmm. you know, this, that, and the other thing. So I'm like, okay, when I cook for him, I can, you know, add some some witchiness into there. Did you know that cheese has magical properties? <laughs> Um, I mean, I think it's pretty magical. <laughs> like, I, you know, I was feeling pretty down about my practice and how, you know, I hadn't really done anything. And I was looking into, like, the magical properties of ingredients. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a book of, it's like the, it's the Encyclopedia of Magical Ingredients. It's oh, a really, nice. sh- like, short yellow book. It's very Wiccan-based, though, so mm-hmm. you don't get, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, ingredients for goofer dust and all that stuff in there. You don't get, like, grave dirt, graveyard dirt, but you get, yeah. like... Pizza. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know what I nice mean? magical pizza, people. So I was like, okay. You can integrate magic into your into your everyday in the most amazing ways. Yeah. And now that I know that I can make pizza yeah. part of that. The way that you cut your pizza, like shut the front door. I swear. Yeah. Like any like certain shapes. When you make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, you can like draw a sigil. Mm -hmm. on your sandwich before Mm -hmm. you like spread it out oh yeah like it's so rad so like i've been looking into more of that kind of stuff and so i i did i used the google machine the other Mm -hmm. day and i was just looking into like just cooking ingredients regular food with magical properties Mm -hmm. and i happened to eat a lot of mac and cheese Mm -hmm. turns out mac and cheese has magical properties so (laughs) that's crazy so yeah just you know that kind of stuff um knowing what um what herbs are safe and not safe to eat turns out that um pasta has magical properties and the shape of the pasta matters very important so say say you have like regular like angel hair pasta like Mm -hmm. spaghetti noodles type whatever so pasta is like a conduit for energy really um so the the regular like angel hair pasta Mm -hmm. Kind of doesn't really, doesn't really... Do much. Yeah. Didn't hold on to anything. However, mm. elbow macaroni. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> so, <laughs> y'all, she's so excited. Okay, I'm very passionate about mac and cheese. I'm, I'm a cheese connoisseur, so to speak. Yeah. So, like, hollow kind of noodles mm-hmm. or pasta or... You know, even like the shells, mm-hmm. because it it's hollow like that. It it holds a lot of 
energy. That makes sense, so, actually. So you, you add the cheese to it. Cheese has very, like, um, when I was reading it, I was like, it sounds a lot like amethyst. Okay. Where it was just very, like, spiritually healing and mm-hmm. soothing, calming. That's why mac and cheese is so comforting oh when you eat God, it. That makes so much sense. Right? So- <laughs> my life is, like, everything in my life makes sense now, guys. I'm I'm done. <laughs> Mac and cheese when I'm sad because it fills the hole, fills the void. It's very soothing. It probably, well, I mean, if you think about it, yeah, man, that makes so much sense. Right? Oh my gosh. It's great. It's perfect. I gotta, gotta look into this. Maybe there's a reason, you know. Yeah. I have, I, I have food a, so much. I have a couple of sites saved mm-hmm. that I actually, I mean, to write all this stuff down. <clears throat> I intend to write all of these ingredients down and what they do and everything. I have like a little mini one that, um, I have like, poisons written down like herbs that are poisonous yeah yeah. basically the list just says don't eat these yes but i want to get a list together of things that you should eat for certain reasons or whatever Mm -hmm. um i would also like a more like vast knowledge on like teas yeah and things i'm not real big on herbal tea unless it's like like doused in honey Gotcha. Or sugar or something. I don't really like the taste of like herbs and mm-hmm. stuff, but I still want I still want the juice. Yeah, yeah. If that if that makes sense. You just like it sweet. Yeah. Like really sweet. But that's because you're used to sweet tea. Have you thought about like lowering your amount of sugar? What does that mean? <laughs> like don't make it quite so sweet and just kinda like taper yourself off of the of the sugar? That uh, that doesn't that doesn't process. That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't register. My family's from Kentucky. We don't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I got you. My family's from Oklahoma and Arkansas, so we used to call my grandma's sweet tea sugar water yeah, it was because it was legit sugar water. Yeah. And she would make sun tea, which to me, like her sun tea, do you know what sun tea is? Isn't it just tea just made in the sun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she called it sun tea. Okay. So to me, like looking back now, it's like. That made so because when like her sun tea tasted better than any tea on the planet, because and it, it just was charged by the power. It of the was sun. charged by the sun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's things you don't think about that like there's magic everywhere, everywhere. It's, it's fantastic. And so you know, and going along with my my doula thing. Mm-hmm. Um. So you know, I I know a few people who are pregnant right now and they're dealing with like the nausea and all of that stuff. So Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know that there are teas for remedying nausea and this, this and that, Mm -hmm. but I would also like to get a list together of things that they should not be consuming. I know mugwort is not safe. No. Uh, Pennyroyal is not safe. Um, You know, like there's a lot of stuff that normal people, you know, who are not with child can consume. But, you know, once you get a little bun in the oven, you can't, you gotta yeah. be careful. Yeah, you can't have that. You put in your body. So you know, having a a vast knowledge of herbs and things like that, I feel, will be very, very handy. Because I mean, and you think about it. So pagans, or they they call us witches. We were the first doctors. We yeah. were the first. Like all of our medical knowledge is herbs and plants, and you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. salves and things like that. So oh, it's yeah. kind of just going back to our roots studying the old medicine Mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of that's kind of where i'm coming from is i want to know the old medicine yeah okay did you see the last season of sabrina though no 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 i haven't yet i'm not gonna tell you but watch it okay just watch it now okay the only reason that i even watched sabrina because i am a 90s child yeah so i watched the og sabrina yeah and the last thing i wanted was like dark scary well, I wasn't even, I wasn't told it was dark, scary version. I was just told, oh, they remade Sabrina. And I was like, I'm, I'm not watching that. I watched the original. Yeah. That would be like if they remade Back to the Future. Not happening. Not watching it. Yeah. Don't care. Okay. And that's how I felt about Sabrina. And then it was uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving, one of the two. And my niece was like, you've got to watch this. And I was like, eh, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll watch it because you're here and you want to watch it. Yeah. And I started watching it. I was like, this is nothing like my Sabrina. <laughs> yeah. And like part of me was okay with it and part of me wasn't. And then the fact that they weren't really, they kind of made it sound like all witches were Satanists. Yeah. You know? And I was like, I'm, at first I was offended. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, this is, this is what causes problems for general pagans. Yeah. You know, it's stuff like this. It's the fact that they, everybody thinks that we're out you know, naked in the middle of the woods, freaking worshiping Satan and, and, you know, slicing people to bits on a, on an, on an altar. Not happening. Okay. I'm doing this wrong. So, 
but you know what I mean? Like that's what people think of. Yeah. And so for the show to like literally go that direction, yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? And the more I watched it, the more I'm like, all right, it's okay. It's not bad. I'll keep watching it. And you just get sucked into the story. Yeah. And I'm like, I like that they made it very clear though, that they are like, you know, Satanists. Yeah. Not general pagans. Cause I mean, I think technically Satanism would fall under paganism, but it's a monotheistic religion, so it might not. Technically falls under Christianity. That's true because Satan is a Christian construct. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like once um like once you get into like Luciferianism, mm -hmm. like with the like the actual fallen angel, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's very yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, you know. Um so with 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 that that being said, what okay. what you just said right now, you uh -huh. have to watch it season okay. three, okay, because it's it's gonna blow your mind a little bit. Oh god, yeah, it. Oh, god. I you know, I think the th the thing that attracts us about TV witches and you know like Harry Potter and the craft and stuff, we know that we can't do all that stuff, you know, making stuff float and mm -hmm. you know this this that and the other thing, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, it's fun to watch. And it's kind of, I feel like secretly we wish it could be Oh that yeah, way. do I, do I wish that I could change my hair color yeah. by running my hands over my head every day? Yeah. Every day. And that's why it's so great to watch. And you know, the aesthetic, oh mm -hmm. God, the outfits, oof, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Just the look. And I, I, I mean, you've, you've seen my, my personal space. Oh yeah. You, mm -hmm. You're like one of only like maybe two people who has been in my personal <gasps> space. So nobody honored. nobody comes into my my room my my chamber of darkness um <laughs> which is not that dark by the way yeah it's, it's not <laughs> the walls are like baby blue not by my choice i would totally paint them red if i could like oh, yeah. um but like i have like my coffin shelf and my mm -hmm. skulls and you know it's very dark and that's very much my aesthetic mm -hmm. but not so much my craft i think yeah. there are times when i can get a little dark yeah um, but my, my craft is so like, I just want to heal people yeah. and make them feel better. And I like to cook things that make people feel warm and fuzzy and loved. And, and honestly, I feel like most people that are actually meant to be in this craft because, um, so you have, you have the people who are drawn to paganism for the power, Yeah, you know, and then you have people who are drawn to it to help people. And I feel like most people who actually stay in it and and use it as a lifestyle are the people who are there to help other people yeah which i think is why it's so offensive that everyone thinks that we're bad people out like casting curses on people when 90 i'd say about 90 percent of us our our first step would be to help people and not hurt people now there's always circumstances in in some branches of paganism yeah. there's circumstances where you know, you would use more offensive magic than defensive magic. Yeah, which I've been there. Yeah. Only very spare, you know, like very, very rarely. And but it's always highly provoked. Yeah. It's always something like this person is a very bad person and the justice system has not done anything. So I'm taking mm -hmm. it into my own hands. Like yeah. that kind of a thing. You don't, you know what I mean? You don't just, you don't curse somebody because they looked at you wrong. Like they got to do something really bad. I mean, granted, I've, I've had moments where I'm driving and I'm like, oh, and I have to stop myself from thinking horrible things because I'm like, if it were to happen and I saw it on the news later, I'm going to feel really bad. Yeah. Well, Not that I think that I'm that powerful, yeah. but I'm just saying like, it would be my luck because my guilt, oh, my guilt runs deep. See, okay, before before my, my chronic pain started, mm -hmm. I, I may have inadvertently, accidentally done a couple of things to people, but I mean, they had it coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? dare i ask Let, let's let's i mean is there any that you're willing to talk about okay so i was seeing this guy mm -hmm. a few years ago um we weren't together or anything but we were just kind of like casually just like seeing each other right mm -hmm. i did not know that he had a severe alcohol problem oh and i mean once he told me that he you know was like going to a rehab for it and everything i'm like okay like we can we can get through this, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I I can be here for you and support you. But he wasn't following his rehab, and he was really bad. So comes to a night where he picks me up, and he's super drunk. And I don't realize it at first, but he's super drunk. We're visiting with my parents, 
and like that whole like it's it's a whole long story so i can't super get into it but mm-hmm. basically uh we get into his truck which wasn't his truck he rented like a u-haul truck like what? to drive around yeah it was weird what yeah it was weird like not one of the big ones with like the storage thing oh, but like, like a little a pickup truck. yeah like a little pickup truck. okay because i was totally seeing a box truck in my head yeah no i'm like that's so, the weirdest thing i've ever heard yeah and the plan was he drunk when he did it <laughs> <laughs> probably. probably um so he's super drunk and i tell him hand me your keys you are not driving mm-hmm. and so i'm driving his truck and he's like yelling at me and he's like you're trying to control me and this and this and that and he's just like wasty pants mm-hmm. right so i'm like freaking out i can't handle being yelled at because i'm soft i cannot yeah. handle being yelled at and so i told him like stop yelling at me like stop and he grabs the steering wheel like three different times and tries to run us into stuff <gasps> and like oh just my goodness. yeah it was bad so i pull up to the place that he's staying he was staying with another girl so i pull up to her place and i get out this is okay imagine this is on um like m street in california yeah Mm -hmm. i get out and i start walking Mm -hmm. towards 19th street Mm -hmm. like towards like uh what is that um chester like i start walking down chester so he backs up his car Mm -hmm. the truck whatever and he's like do you need a ride like i'll drive you and i'm like you're drunk no and he Mm -hmm. goes to drive off and i'm like i should call the cops on him for driving drunk and then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to get arrested for something else tonight. You're going to get arrested for something even worse. Mm. So I I walk myself down to 19th Street. I take myself into the mint. Mm. And some nice lady buys me a beer because she says that I look like I've had a rough night. Well, that was nice of her. It was very nice of her. She was very sweet. A couple of days later, I find out that that fella got arrested that night for threatening with intent to terrorize what yes and he spent like a like a week or so in jail Mm -hmm. yeah so (laughs) wow yeah so i don't know where he is now but magic in the making people magic in the making yeah that's how you do it and that's what it's funny because when you were talking about cooking i was thinking about like when i cook i always cook with intention yeah unless i'm just too tired people because there's those days yeah but like when i'm cooking it's always like okay what do I know that tomorrow has a head? You know, so if I know that tomorrow I've got a, a lot of meetings or I've got a class, something I got to learn, you know, I'll think about that while I'm, while I'm stirring and just be like, may, you know, this meal bring me, you know, focus and knowledge and um, grounding tomorrow so that I can do well on blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all about intention. And, and I feel like that's 90% of magic is intention, you know. Like you talk about crystals is you can use a quartz crystal for anything, literally anything. Your intention is what makes it what it is. Same thing with white or black candles. Honestly, any color candle. Yeah. But specifically white and black candles, well, it's ancestors what you put didn't into have it. Color candles. Candles, so. exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. all about the intention. Yeah. About what you do. But I feel like our ancestors probably use a lot more herbs than we do. Oh yeah, most definitely. Definitely lazy witches these days. Yeah. We're, I mean, we have. I mean, I do a lot of my witchy stuff on my iPad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, uh, with technology and everything, we're definitely a uh, <laughs> different breed. Yeah. But like, like last night, mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, my, my boyfriend worked a really long shift and he got home at like nine o'clock at night mm-hmm. and he's tired and this and this and that. So I was like, I will make dinner. So I made grilled cheese and tomato soup. Nice. So as I'm making it, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna put this cheese on here and I'm going to melt it slowly as like a representative of the the melting into the bed and going to sleep type of like it was mm-hmm. like a i don't know what the, my brain was like doing a thing of like yeah. my intention for visualizing this, for this meal is to give him calm and peace and get him wound down for his night mm-hmm. and you know like just i i try to do that thing yeah yeah that's good i mean again it's about intention and intuition that should be on a shirt. Yeah. We got we to gotta start writing these down. I'm going to start totally. making shirts. Hey, guess what? This is recorded. I'll write it down later. <laughs> I'll write it down later. I got this. <laughs> well, we'll write it down when we listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else that you would like to express while we're here? Um, Not specifically. Maybe that um, I hope that uh, 
many different form uh, forms of this path and many different opinions are expressed. You know, I hope I hope your listeners get a few different uh, perspectives because everybody's path is different. That's the you truth. I mean? my, That's the truth. My path is going to be way different from the next person you have on here. So, yeah. you know. I I hope uh I hope this this podcast gives people lots of information on I the many so different too. ways of doing things. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the point is I want I want people to see the difference that there's no one way to do anything, especially in paganism. Yeah. Um so I really appreciate you coming on and giving us your uh, your little uh you know, your bio. Yeah. And and letting us have a little peek into the world of B. So uh, just in case you guys didn't write down her information previously, you can find her on Instagram at BBD00093. Her TikTok is Miss B Stings 93 and you can find her at piercingsbyb.com. So thank you for listening, everybody. Be the light and remember that you are never alone. Bye.